Today, we're looking at the automatic transmission. Why do Americans love them more than the manual? What are the different types of automatic transmissions? What are some common mistakes people make while driving an automatic transmission car? Stick around, because I'll share some do's and don'ts to help minimize the wear and tear on your transmission. So hop in and let's get going. Have you ever tried renting a car in Europe? If so, you have a higher chance of getting a manual transmission car than an automatic. But it's the opposite in America. Manuals are less popular here. In fact, knowing how to drive a stick shift is becoming a lost art in the American car world. Today, some 97% of new combustion engine cars sold in the U.S. are equipped with an automatic transmission. That's because Americans love ease and convenience. And automatics in general have come a long way since their beginning. Plus, gas prices are relatively cheaper in the U.S. and other countries. So you can see why America loves the automatic. But it wasn't always that way. Did you know that decades ago, they used whale oil as automatic transmission oil? I'm not making this up. It was a good option because evidently it prevented rust. But the industry stopped using whale oil around the 1960s. By that time, three-speed units with torque converters had gained popularity. By the 1980s, automatic transmissions with four gear ratios became more popular. Many were equipped with lock-up torque converters to improve fuel economy. It was around that time that automatics started to become ever more popular and eventually started outselling manuals in the U.S. By 2007, automatics outsold manuals for the first time worldwide. So, what are the pros and cons of the automatic transmission? The main thing is, they're easy and convenient. It's much easier to drive, especially in heavy traffic. You just press the pedal and go. It's a no-brainer, whereas manual cars require more effort to start, stop, and accelerate, especially in heavy traffic. With an automatic car, you usually don't have to worry about stalling, whereas manuals can stall accidentally at a stoplight. Automatic transmission are especially appreciated if you live in a hilly area. If you're not a skilled driver, it's easier to conquer hills in San Francisco with an automatic transmission car rather than stalling or rolling back in a manual. Modern automatic transmissions shift quicker and smoother, so you and your passengers normally don't feel the transmission shift. Also, learning to drive in an automatic is much quicker and easier. I have to admit, I learned how to drive in an automatic Chevrolet, but then I bought a standard Opel once I learned how to drive. In an automatic, you literally just need to learn the principles of driving on the road. But back in the old days, when manuals were more popular, not only did you have to learn how to drive on the road, but you had to learn how to operate the shift stick and clutch, which required more coordination skills. Another big advantage is that most of the new cars in America are automatic, and many car makers aren't even making manual options in some of their models. But now let's talk about the disadvantages. Cars with automatic transmissions can be more expensive than their manual equivalents because it's more complex than a manual and has many more moving parts. Of course, that depends on the car making model, but on average, an automatic car can cost $4,000 more. For the same reason, the cost of repair is generally higher. There there are a few subjective disadvantages to the automatic. For example, they say it's less fun to drive since you have less control. Also, some argue that a manual transmission car requires the driver maintain focus and coordination more, whereas it's less so with an automatic. So what's wrong with that? Well, the downside is that it makes drivers more prone to multitask and engage in other activities in an automatic, which can lead to accidents. But again, these are probably subjective, but nevertheless, still food for thought. But now let's shift gears and talk about some common types of modern automatic transmission. The most common type of automatic transmission is the torque converter automatic. This works by using a hydraulic fluid coupling or torque converter connected to the ECU or electronic control unit to allow the transmission to control the car. Many people have heard about the continuously variable transmission, also known as CVT. A CVT doesn't use gears. Instead, it uses belts and pulleys, which create a range of gear ratios that constantly adapt to different driving conditions. CVT can be more fuel efficient, especially for stop and go city driving. CVT is also fairly simple and cheap to produce. Another type of transmission is the dual clutch transmission, or DCT. Essentially, it's two manual transmissions in one one gearbox controlled by a computer. It's called dual clutch because you have a clutch for the even numbered gears and another clutch for the odd numbered gears. During automatic operation, the computer engages the clutch for one gear set and disengages it from the other to perform the shifts. Since the inactive gear set is always ready to go, gear changes can be incredibly fast. 
And that's why you'll often find dual-clutch transmissions in high-performance vehicles such as Porsches. There's also the semi-automatic transmission, or SACT. This system is sometimes called an automated manual or clutchless manual transmission. Basically, you can usually choose between fully automatic and manual modes, but unlike a manual car, you don't have a clutch. Instead, the driver uses a switch or paddle to change gears, and the car takes care of the clutch electronically. Formula One race cars use highly automated, semi-automated sequential gearboxes, which have paddle shifters. F1 regulations mandate eight forward gears and one reverse gear must be used with rear wheel drive. Fully automatic gearboxes have been illegal since 2004. Reason why is because they wanted to ensure that teams weren't using gearboxes, launch control, and traction control systems illegally to gain a competitive advantage. In other words, they wanted to ensure that individual driver control and skills were still at the forefront of these races. Basically, each driver must initiate gear shifts using paddles mounted behind the steering wheel. Then electro-hydraulic actuators and sensors do the actual shifting and throttle control. Most teams are using seamless shift transmission, which allows almost instantaneous changing of gears, with minimum loss of drive power. In fact, shift times for Formula One cars are around 0.05 seconds. But now back to everyday life. Believe it or not, there's actually a lot of misconceptions about driving an automatic transmission car. So here are actual do's and don'ts that really help you minimize wear and tear on your transmission and maximize your automatic transmission's life. First, don't coast in neutral when you're going downhill. There's a belief you can save fuel if you put your gearbox in neutral when you're going downhill. But that's not true. This actually cuts the oil supply so the transmission doesn't get the proper lubrication for smooth operation and can lead to wear. But also, driving in neutral minimizes your control over your car's speed and movement. So it's a safety issue too. You don't want to freewheel down a giant mountain. So if you have this habit, it's best to unlearn it. If you're just sitting in the car for a very long time, is it okay to leave the car and drive? Well, this causes overheating that can damage your transmission. So in this case, it's just better to shut the car off or at least leave it in park. A common mistake is shifting to park mode before the car is fully stopped. In other words, where your car is still rolling or crawling. If you do this, you risk breaking the locking pin. It's a similar thing you do when you shift from drive to reverse or vice versa. You risk wearing or stripping the gears when the car is moving, which leads to serious damage. So, before you change gears, just make sure the car is completely stopped. Yet another common mistake, keeping your fuel tank low. Did you know that an automatic car depends on fluid pressure to run properly? Fuel also helps keep your engine and other parts to stay cool and lubricated. So if you consistently keep your tank low on fuel, your car will wear out a lot faster than normal. I recommend you always keep your car tank more than a quarter full at minimum. And after it reaches the quarter line, just fill it up again. Pretend quarter is E. Is there harm in driving on a spare tire for an extended period of time? Spare tires are usually much smaller than the original standard factory tires. And driving on mismatched tires for a long time ruins the wheel alignment and also strains your transmission, especially if you have a four-wheel drive vehicle. Never do that. So yes, it does harm your car. So it's best to get your tire changed the sooner the better. Or, like I do, have an old car that has a full-size spare. Now, most people who drive manually already know to always use the emergency brake whenever they're parked, whether it's uphill or flat. But did you know that the emergency brake can also help save your automatic transmission? If you're parked uphill, downhill, or in a place where your car might be vulnerable to movement, you should always use the emergency brake even if you have an automatic transmission. Otherwise, you risk damaging the parking problem. Now, what if you get water into your automatic transmission? This can cause irreversible damage to the tranny because it can prevent your gears from shifting. If you have reason to believe you have water in a transmission, you should not drive your car. You should tow it to a mechanic and have it flush out immediately. Also, common mistakes is overloading your car, especially in hot temperatures. But heavy loads cause overheating and also can cause the transmission fluid to oxidize or burn, which in turn means premature wear and tear on your transmission. If you need to tow a heavy load, make sure your car is built for it by checking the max towing and payload capacity. Or else, just use a tow truck or a vehicle that's specially designed for towing. Did you know that driving hard without warming up your engine is bad for your car? More people do this than you think, especially in the winter. Thing is, in the winter, cold weather causes oil to thicken and move slower. So it's best to start your car and let it run a bit while still parked to give the transmission fluid time to run into the transmission. Otherwise, if you shift into gear and drive at high speed, you can end up causing internal damage. 
And always check your vehicle owner's manual for specifics on your car. If you do need to add fluid, make sure you add the correct fluid. There are many different transmission fluids out these days. But now, you tell me, did you ever do or didn't do any of these things and later regretted it? Please comment below and share your funnier or horror stories about your transmission. If you like this episode, subscribe to my channel. Thanks for your support.